So I said, first and foremost, I said, the work, I mean, she looked like she was ready to do something in the last few days. I said, with the work, what, what, what were you hoping to see from her this Just morning? Just what I saw. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she doesn't need a whole lot. She's a big, tall, slight kind of filly. She doesn't need a whole lot. She's coming off a race <clears throat> two weeks ago and shipping and stuff. So, you know, it's 48 and 4, 49 is what I was looking for. And she got the <clears throat> nice five eights and kind of three quarters. And, you know, I think so far we're right on track. You were just there watching her when she, they were sponging her off and stuff and looking at her. What's the Hall of Fame trainer when he's looking at her? What's, that, what's running through your mind when you, you see her? And what the biggest are you thing I was doing was trying to hurry him up and get her walking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I just wanted to see, you know, kind of how she reacted to it. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, she seemed to be seemed to be fine. And, you know, that's about all. Was that some unscheduled company yeah. she hooked down the lane? And what were you thinking kind of as that That didn't bother me. I mean, it just, it just pulled her along a little bit. And that, that was fine. Mm -hmm. that wasn't, but it was unscheduled, yeah. 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 It looked like she finished up good and then galloped out strong, but, though. With very the, with good. The I caught her the last three eights and 36 and galloped out. I think she went off in like a 12 and 4 or something like that. And uh, so, no, I thought everything was good. You, you know, so I think she went the last eight and 11 and change. You've been around a lot of top horses and a lot of top fillies, you know, in against that in that context, talk about Kathleen O. Well, she's been a you know, obviously Jenny, she's been a pleasant surprise. We bought her as a two year old and it's the <clears throat> the guy's first horse, he's eighty four year old man, just wanted to get into the game to, for uh give him another interest and um you know, it's kinda like a miracle. But uh you know, it's she continues to amaze to tell you the truth she gets better and better and um you know i thought <clears throat> you know from from day one i waited on her just because she was a big tall kind of filly and you know we finally ran her and then really run her back in the stake <clears throat> you know off one race is really not my style but you know she handled that pretty well on january the first and then she just kind of went through the progression and you know it's uh the Kentucky Oaks is a <clears throat> is a race that I really hold in high context, and you know was lucky enough to win it. But it's been a long time ago, and you know I've always wanted to have it, have the opportunity again. And I think that she's kind of the filly that maybe will give us the you know if everything goes right, will give us the opportunity to at least compete and have a big chance. So uh, you know. Should when she came to your barn initially, was there any one moment that you thought should be something special? Not really. I haven't, you know, I mean, I've just kind of, I've been amazed at her her progression. You know, she just does what you want her to do, but she does what she does easy. And, uh, you know, I mean, Dave has been, got on her from day one that she's come in there. And, uh, you know, so I get good feedback from him and that's all been, you know, very positive. And um, so, you know, I, I mean, I thought when we ran her the first time, she was going to run good but I didn't know if she was going to run that good. And then when she ran back in the cash run, that was sort of a surprise too, the way that, the way that she run, when she, the way that she won. And then when she ran the Devonna Dale, her rate, her work the week before was not really kind of, kind of worried me a little bit. It wasn't that, wasn't as up to par, but I was there and she seemed to come out of it good and this and that, and then she came back and ran good. And then everything was really good up to the Gulfstream Park Oaks. And, you know, so far it's been been good here. Brought her to Keeneland just because horses seem to thrive around here in the spring. And I'm going to leave her here. I'll take her to church. I'll work her here again next weekend. And I'll take her to Churchill where she has to work over the track over there and kind of gets. But there's really not any, uh, you know, she trained at pace and all winter. And, you know, we just bring her down there and run her and it didn't seem to be a problem. And same thing when she ran it off Aqueduct. So I don't think adapting to a track is going to be maybe as big a problem as more of a settling problem for me. <laughs> you touched on it with the cash run. You know, I think that was a race where she kind of hesitated at the start. At the start she got shut off and then she just was unfazed by it and draws off the way she did. Yeah. How rare is it in your experience to have a young horse who can face that kind of embrace adversity and just shake it off like that? Well, you're right. I mean, she when she ran in the Gulfstream Park Oaks first time, she's ever really broke good, and she's not fast in that respect. You know, it's kind of so. I, I I think the way she ran the cash run did surprise me a little bit. As easy as she won, um, 
you know, after, like you say, she she didn't break that good and was kind of back. But I think I was a little more impressed with Gulfstream Park Oaks first time around two turns. You know, she has outside. She gets kind of carried out going around the first turn. And, um, you know, Javier just said he was right, he was sort of following Todd's filly and could have gone the lead earlier if he'd wanted, but he kind of wanted to just sit and wait on her until when he, when he asked her, um, she was there. But that worried me a little bit more than uh, the than the cash run thing at the gate because, you know, I didn't really know where we stood at that race, but I kind of knew where we stood going into Gulfstream Park Oak. So, you know, once you got carried out like that, I said, well, it'll be interesting to see how, how she handles that, but I thought she handled it fine. How did you hook up with the owner since this is his first Known the guy, Jenny, he plays golf where I play golf and played occasionally with him. Uh, and knew him just around from around the locker room and this and that, but no, no social uh, <clears throat> surroundings, you know, at all. And um, you know, he he kind of came to me uh, winter before last, and just was asking some questions. But I just thought they were educational questions, and then. They got a little bit, but never anything about buying a horse or anything like that. I said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll bring you a couple of invoices. And I brought him a high invoice and a low invoice just so he would have some sort of an idea. And he handed them back the next day and said, this doesn't bother me. And I said, well, you know, where do you want to go with it? And he said, well, I'd like to, you know, maybe get involved. And so we went to the Gulfstream sale and bid on a filly. And she brought more than I thought then I was prepared to pay for her. So then we went to uh, Ocala and uh, Niall had this Billy Brennan that he liked. And, um, you know, so we got kind of active with her. And then, uh, you know, I'd kind of said, we probably ought to try to get two. And well, we bought a Colt that, that's okay. Um, he's been, been off all winter. He's back training in Ocala now. And you know, I don't know that, I mean, obviously he's not going to be what she is, but, um, you know, I think he's going to be a horse that he can have some fun with. And the guy, the guy, you know, he's ha having a lot of fun. I mean, you know, it's kind of the cash run. His family's down there for the holidays and this and that. That was on January 1st, you know, so there's another kind of, you know, how can this happen? You got your whole family there. And, and uh, I don't even know. You know, I remember I said, I said, did you know he had a horse? He said, not until we saw the picture of her when she broke her maid. Oh, gee. And um, so it's been it's been a really fun experience for him and his wife, and it's gave them a different interest, uh, you know, besides, <clears throat> you know, just playing golf or something. And, uh, you know, especially, you know, this, to get to where we are, and he's enjoying uh, uh, the kind of the attention he's getting. and. <laughs> So I think that uh, I think it's all good. I mean, you know, it, it's a tremendous story, and it's a story that you know the press has run with a little bit, um, and they should because this is kind of what the game's about. You know, he's in it for horse, you know, because he's enjoying it. He's not in, in he's not in it to sell her, or he, but he just wants to have a good time, you know. And I mean, I've had people call and say, you know, would he want to sell part of her? Or, could we trade part of a horse is going to run in the derby for part, you know, that, no, I said, that's not what he's in it for. He's in it to have a good time for him and his wife. And, uh, but, you know, I think his daughter's coming down, going to drive him down here for the Oaks. And uh, so, it'll, you know, have her involved. And, you know, I think they're coming like on Wednesday late or something. And so they'll get to see kind of all the goings on on Thursday and Friday. And I think he's staying for the derby. Which, could be a mistake. But. What are you telling him about the, <laughs> I'm telling him that this doesn't oaks. happen. <laughs> I said, that, you know, it, I said, it doesn't happen. Ideas. I said, and, you know, and you're not going to really believe when you get to, to uh, like Oaks Day, you know, what you're going to see. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, obviously, Derby Week at Churchill and Louisville is a very, very special time. And, <clears throat> you know, I think that... Uh, I think that they'll enjoy it. Um, might be at their age a little intimidated by the crowd, but we'll try between me and he's got an, 
Aquinas and Lexington that uh, can kind of watch out after him and Churchill will too. So uh, I think it'll be a really, really good experience for him. And I hope that it's one that he really enjoys, win, lose, or draw, and you know can maybe tell other people about it. This when you when you picked the filly out, did you have any thoughts on her sire? He's really lit it up this spring. No. Knew about the horse. I mean, you know, from, from when he was running and stuff, but nothing really as a sire yeah. or uh, this and that. I liked her mother. She's out of a Blaine mare by Arch. I like that that family. Yeah. Uh, Flatterer was a horse that the upstarts by that I, that I was familiar with um, from, uh, in fact, I had him for a while and then we sent him to Steve Penrod mm -hmm. at uh, Churchill. And <clears throat> um, so I was familiar with the family and all around I had congrats and his brother and um, so I was familiar with kind of both sides of it and liked both sides of it. Uh, but I liked the horse, but you know, the female part of it really kind of intrigued me because I like, I like Arch. And uh, uh, so that, that didn't, you know what I mean? And uh, so that did, that piqued my interest a little bit. This is gonna be an unbelievable Oaks where a really good, a champion caliber filly could be fourth. Yeah. Or fifth, even. Uh, just your thoughts on how the Oaks is shaping up with some of the other fillies out there. Well, I mean, it, I think it's good. You know, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, with we've seen Echo Zulu. We've seen Secret Oath, you know, Nest. Um, you know, so I think that it's going to be, you know, I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, it's not ducking and diving here and there. I mean, you know, if you, if you go to the Kentucky Oaks, just like if you go to the Kentucky Derby, it ain't gonna be easy. And, uh, but, you know, obviously we're gonna be, if everything goes right in the next two or three weeks, we're gonna be in with a chance. And, you know, that's all we're looking for. You were at Churchill in 84, 85 when the Oaks was, um, the Oaks wasn't what it was today. It was, uh, it was a nice race, but uh, it, I mean, they've really developed that into such a huge, day of racing well it's it, it very much so and, then, and they've done a very very good job of you know the whole week and trying to promote it you know from Thursday through Saturday and but they've done tremendous work with Oaks and Derby Day as a pair and uh, you know I mean yeah you know, it used to be the Louisville day of racing and now it's it's a little bit more than that when you Got to have a hundred thousand people there instead of twenty. <clears throat> but I think it's exciting. I think it's exciting the programs that they put together, and you know, hats off to to uh, Churchill and uh, Ben Huffman. I mean, he's put together a tremendous program around there, and um, I think that Churchill's a very aggressive company. Um, that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger.